Happy holidays, everyone, and welcome to Cinematic Excrement. It's time once again to review a shitty Christmas movie, and this year we're looking at the 2007 travesty known as Fred Claus. Based on the children's book, A Legend of Santa and His Brother Fred, Fred Claus tells the story of, well, Santa and his brother Fred, with Vince Vaughn as the lesser-known brother of Santa and Paul Giamatti as the jolly old fat man himself. Because one crappy Paul Giamatti movie just wasn't enough. I needed two. And really, calling this movie crappy is being kind. It's awful. And it really shouldn't be. It's got an incredibly talented cast, the director of Wedding Crashers, the writer of, well, okay, but even so, it should have at least been decent, but somehow even that bar was too high to clear. I'd explain everything wrong with this movie, but then we'd be here until next Christmas, so let's just cover the important stuff. The movie begins in the woods of, um, country, where we are treated to an origin story for Santa, even though I'm pretty sure his origin has already been told more often than Superman, Batman, and Spider-Man combined. You've probably heard many stories that begin a long, long time ago, in a land far away. Yeah, I covered one of those last year. I still have nightmares about those damn Wookiees. We witness Santa being birthed by Kathy Bates and quickly get a taste of the type of comedy this movie is going for. It's the fattest baby I've ever seen. Get it? Because he's Santa. And he's fat. So that means he was born fat. Hilarious. Also, how in the bleak midwinter did you squeeze that thing out, woman? Your vagina must be in shambles. Ho. Oh. Ah! Ho, oh, oh. It's an abomination. Kill it! Kill it with fire! But the parents are absolutely enthralled with their new hellspawn and decide to name him Nicholas. Yes. Nicholas Claus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the phone. Nicholas Claus? Okay, so the figure we know as Santa Claus was originally based on the Dutch figure Sinterklaas, who in turn was based on St. Nicholas of Myra. You may remember him as the man who apparently inspired Kirk Cameron to beat people up in the name of Jesus or some such bullshit. But anyway, St. Nicholas, Sinterklaas, Santa Claus, you hear it? The name Claus comes from Nicholas. It's already in the name. Calling him Nicholas Claus is redundant. Did they put any thought into this at all? Why do you ask questions to which you already know the answers? At first, it looks like young Frederick and Nicholas are going to get along just fine. I promise to be the best big brother in the whole world, Nicholas. Oh! Don't call your brother that. But that doesn't last long as Santa proves to be kind of a jackass. He apparently got the idea for Christmas trees and decided to chop down a tree while his brother was sitting in it. And of course, Fred walks away unscathed because logic has no place here. And one day, young Nicholas decides to enter the house through the chimney because, get this, the front door was locked. Why didn't he just knock? Why didn't just knock? You tell him, Fred. Because he's inventive. If by inventive you mean stupid. Why can't you be more like your brother? Well, if you insist, Nikki, go climb a tree so I can chop it down. As if Nikki's antics weren't bad enough, his parents think everything he does is absolutely adorable. Of course, any real parents would probably discuss placing this child in the special classroom, but again, logic has no place here. So with Nikki getting all the praise and glory while Fred is forced to spend his life in his brother's shadow, it's no wonder Fred grows up to be a bitter son of a bitch who works as a repo man. Okay, that's actually kind of clever. But here's where it gets weird. At some point in time, Nicholas becomes a saint. I'm pretty sure death is normally a prerequisite for beatification, but whatever. And according to this movie, when you become a saint, you are frozen in time and you stop aging. This conveniently applies to spouses and family members as well. So with that in mind, why does Santa look so much older than Fred? Fred is supposed to be the older brother. How come he looks 40 and Santa looks 80? Did they not stop aging at the same time? What the hell's going on here? 
Anyway, Fred likes to spend his spare time hanging out in his apartment with some local orphan boy, which is a little weird. I mean, there's nothing perverted going on here, it's just... weird. But when he's not giving milk to orphans, Fred is an asshole. And I mean a raging, smelly, hemorrhoidal asshole. For example, he's trying to open an off-track betting shop, but doesn't have the money. So he resorts to dressing up like a Salvation Army bell ringer and swindling people out of their money. He's that kind of asshole. And I get what they're going for. He starts out as a bad guy, but he redeems himself by the end of the movie. It's been done before, it works. But normally this type of character is supposed to be, you know, funny. It is a comedy after all. And yet he is completely devoid of humor. He's constantly going on these long-winded rants that don't really go anywhere, and they don't have any actual jokes. It's just the insane ramblings of a bitter old man. And somehow, despite being an asshole and a comedic black hole, his girlfriend is Rachel Weiss. I call bullshit. I mean, look at her husband. Clearly she has better taste. So I'm sure it won't surprise you that Fred's antics land him in jail. So now he needs money for the betting shop and bail. With the deadline fast approaching and lessons clearly not learned, he decides to call up his brother and con him out of the money. Surprisingly, Santa goes along with it, but only if Fred is willing to earn the money by spending a few days helping out at the North Pole. Reluctantly, Fred agrees, and he's given a ride to Santa's workshop by the head elf Willie, played by John Michael Higgins' face on a little person's body. And just using a little person actor was out of the question because... I mean, the effect looks okay for the time, but was it necessary? Oh God, that no, no, I got it. I got it. Okay. Oh look, it's a little person trying to lift a large, heavy object. Isn't that the funniest thing you've ever seen? Ha 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 ha. Upon arrival, Fred is beaten up by security in a sequence that probably sounded funnier on paper, and he's forced to sleep in Willie's bunk bed in a scene that couldn't possibly have sounded funny on paper. Do they seriously not have another full-size bed in the entire North Pole? Or can't they just make one? They have a friggin' workshop. We're also introduced to Mrs. Claus, played by Miranda Richardson, the workshop's in-house DJ, played by Ludacris, I never thought I would see him in a movie worse than Too Fast, Too Furious, but here we are. And Santa's little helper, Charlene, played by Elizabeth Banks, the only other full-sized human at the North Pole for some reason. And of course, she's wearing a cleavage and leg-revealing dress and somehow not freezing to death. This is a family film, right? And it turns out Willie has the hots for Charlene, can't say I blame him, but Charlene has trouble even remembering Willie's name, and do I even need to tell you how this is gonna go? It's as predictable as the flip of a two-headed coin. He doesn't know how to woo her, so Fred tries to help him out, he ends up embarrassing himself, but by the end of the film, he finally works up the courage to tell her how he feels, and they fall madly in love because of course they fucking do. So we're gonna skip that bullshit and get back to the main story. Santa tries putting Fred to work by giving him some very simple tasks, like deciding which kids are naughty and which are nice. And usually it's pretty straightforward. Hmm. Okay, Nick, I see the box for naughty and nice, but where's the box for psychotic? Because holy shit! Again, this is supposed to be a comedy, right? Because this is not funny. This is disturbing, and that kid needs to be locked up before he murders someone. While Fred gets to work predictably screwing up this mind-bogglingly simple task, Santa has a meeting with Mr. Clyde Northcutt, played by Kevin Spacey, an efficiency expert sent to the North Pole by... Well, I have no idea. He somehow has complete power over Santa and several other mythical beings like the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny and could potentially close Santa's workshop for good. But the movie never explains how he has this power or exactly who he works for. The board is seriously considering shutting you down. Board? There's a board? What board? Who are you? 
So there's about a 30 minute chunk of this movie that consists of little else but Fred getting into trouble, trying to bullshit his way out of it, arguing with family members, rinse and repeat. And it goes on and on and on and it's so irritating. There's even a sequence where Fred's family tries an intervention and they invite his girlfriend to join in. And she seems unusually calm for someone who just found out Santa Claus is real. And oh my god, this scene is dreadful. There's nothing funny, there's nothing clever, it's just a bunch of people shouting at each other. I got enough of that during the presidential debates. Oh, and there's also a joke about Santa's erectile dysfunction. Merry Christmas! Anyway, Fred inevitably fucks up the incredibly simple task that we all knew he would inevitably fuck up, and starts marking every kid nice. This puts Santa in a panic as it increases the number of presents he has to hand out, and they can't possibly make their quota now. Surely I'd mention this to no one, especially Clyde Northcutt. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go argue with Fred about this in the middle of the street as loudly as possible. No, for real. Very next scene. Fred! What the blazes have you done? Good grief, Santa. I think they can hear you in Australia. Obviously, Santa is not happy. He's so unhappy that he tries to run his brother over with a snowmobile. Because nothing gets people in the holiday spirit like vehicular manslaughter. You hate me. I don't hate you, Nick. I just wish you were never born. Merry Christmas! Unfortunately, since Santa cannot fulfill his quota for Christmas, Mr. Northcutt officially shuts him down. I still don't know how he's able to do that, but whatever. But as I said before, this movie is painfully predictable, so of course Fred has a change of heart and manages to rally the elves into making enough presents for every girl and boy, and they miraculously meet their quota. However, Santa has conveniently thrown his back out and is unable to deliver the presents. So of course, he asks Fred to make the deliveries in his place. Because apparently there's a rule that says only a clause can deliver the presents. Who came up with this rule? Who enforces this rule? God? Evil Kevin Spacey and this mysterious board? The Department of Labor? I don't know. But even if we accept this rule, why does it have to be fuck up Freddy that delivers the presents? He's not the only clause, the parents are still around. Or what about his wife? She's a clause by marriage, doesn't that count? Well, reluctantly, Fred agrees to do the honors, but not before he takes the time to lecture his brother. As if he has the moral high ground on anyone at this point. There's no naughty kids, Nick. They're all good kids. Every kid deserves a present on Christmas. I'm amazed that after you saw that psycho with the baseball bat, you can say that with a straight face. And so, Fred puts on the suit and gets ready to earn him some redemption. There, sure glad I don't look stupid in this. And we get a montage of Fred falling on his uncoordinated ass, which is honestly the most satisfying thing I've seen in this entire movie. And he gives a puppy to his orphan friend. In exchange, the kid returns his wallet. Remember, Fred, there are no naughty kids. But evil Kevin Spacey still tries to sabotage everything by cutting the power, thus cutting off Fred from his North Pole navigators. And we finally learn why he has it out for Santa. He never got the gift he wanted as a kid. Yeah, that's it. He didn't get what he wanted because he was on the naughty list. And for this, he blames Santa instead of his own bad behavior. Oh, boo hoo hoo. But after all these years, Santa finally agrees to give him the gift he always wanted. A Superman cape. Get it? Because he once played Lex Luthor. Man, the cleverness just oozes off the screen, doesn't it? Oozes like an open sore. And Northcutt is so touched by this that he agrees to turn the power back on. Which doesn't work. Well, Christmas is ruined. The end. No, actually, despite flying blind, Fred manages to deliver all the presents just in time and Santa's workshop is saved. Well, what was even the point of Northcutt's face turn then? And Fred gets back together with his girlfriend because she somehow still hasn't figured out she can do far better. I pity that poor girl. So, I bet you're wondering what happened to everyone else. You assume too much. And that's Fred Claus. Ho, ho, 
Oh dear lord, this was terrible. The comedy falls completely flat, the message was perhaps well-meaning but misguided, and the characters are just annoying. Normally I like Vince Vaughn, but he was insufferable. And this movie was a colossal waste of talent. Spacey, Vice, Giamatti, Banks, Richardson, all of them deserved far better than this mess. And with a running time of just under two hours, this is quite a slog. So does this movie have any redeeming qualities? Actually, yes. It has one. Only one. There's a scene where Fred joins a support group called Siblings Anonymous, and this is the one scene in the movie that got some genuine laughs out of me. It features Frank Stallone, Roger Clinton, and Stephen Baldwin lamenting how much more famous and successful their brothers have been. And it's hilarious. That's not Alec, okay? That's not Alec. That's not Alec. It's the one part of the movie that shows some genuine wit, and if the rest of the movie had been this funny, well, you wouldn't be watching this video right now. But as funny as that scene is, it's not worth trudging through the rest of this movie. Avoid Fred Claus like the plague. There may not be any naughty kids, but there sure are crappy movies. And as long as there are crappy movies, I will never run out of material. That about wraps it up for this year, so I will see you all in 2017. Until then, I am the Smeghead, and happy holidays. Ah, oh, families together again. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs>